Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and specifically, welcome back to my playing series where I play live for YouTube without the benefit of cherry picking my games. Today, I'm going to be playing the most expensive tanks in World of Tanks using the awesome Tomato GG website, which has started to amalgamate player replays and then collate the data to show which vehicles lose their owners the most credits per game. So, firstly, it's going to be a tier 3 tank. This is the Panzer 2J, which is losing its owners 36,000 credits per battle. And that is because even though it's low tier, this thing pumps through the premium rounds if it actually wants to be competitive, with nearly 70,000 credits spent per game on its ammunition cost. And this is because the Panzer 2J has one of the most ridiculous disparities between the penetration on its regular rounds and its premium rounds in the game. The regular rounds have 23 millimeters of pen, while the premium rounds have 46, meaning that you pretty much have to spam gold in this vehicle if you actually want to get anywhere. Now, the Panzer 2J is actually really old in World of Tanks, probably from about 2013, I'd say, and it was only available inside the CIS region or the, predominantly the Russian server you would have to buy the collector's edition of World of Tanks. And when you bought the collector's edition of World of Tanks, you could either choose the Panzer 2J or you could choose the, the BTSV. And so the codes are actually available on the European server as well, but you'd have to buy the copy um, either in Ukraine, Russia, Belarus, somewhere like that. Luckily, really kind viewer actually gave me one of the codes because it's not like I was going to uh, to travel to Ukraine or Russia to be able to just purchase this tank from that perspective. I'm sure now there would be key retailing websites left, right and center that would be providing that service for a very meaty uptick, right? So the Panzer 2J, it's a completely broken, overpowered tank. It's one of the most filthy vehicles in the game. And the reason for it is because it has 80 millimeters of frontal armor and it's also got 50 millimeters of side armor. Back in the day, this actually used to be a slightly weaker point on the vehicle. I think it either had 40 or 30 millimeters of armor, which meant that you could actually damage it if you were a, a lower tier tank. But Wargaming decided that was too balanced and decided to get rid of the weak point, which I think was a complete joke, literally removing one of the only things that really balanced this vehicle out. And so now you've kind of got tier five heavy tank armor down at tier three with preferential matchmaking, which means that I don't think you ever have to meet anything above tier four possibly. But if you do meet tier four, it can be pretty bad news for this tank. So really, I'm just gonna be able to just go and drive in front of my opponents. And oh, look at that. I bounced a whole magazine of armor piercing rounds. If I'd loaded gold, I would have been able to get that guy. But each one of these gold shells does cost eight hundred credits a shot. Oh my lord, look at that. Somebody actually managing to pen me with gold spam? What is this? What is this? But yeah, that's a tier three uh, premium tank that I've got to watch out for. So maybe this is going to be a battle of the uh, of the premium tanks right now. And now this is where this tank gets very expensive. I just spent uh, 8,000 credits to do 33 damage to this guy. But if I don't, then, you know, I'm not going to really last very long. Interestingly enough, there are vehicles like the Sariano now inside the game. And oh my lord, I just lost my loader. So it's going to take me a very long time to reload the magazine. But you know what? As long as I still just aim fairly well, I should be okay. And look, the reload time on this gun, it's not even that bad. So maybe that's going to mean that I don't have to lose so many credits in this battle. <laughs> um, maybe I have jack of all trades running. No, I don't actually from my commander. Funnily enough, this tank actually has a very weird kind of crew where the, the commander also has to do the, the gunning, but I think it's actually the loader who's the radio operator, which is unusual for a, uh, a German light tank. And so your, your commander isn't very efficient from taking it from the Reimatal Panzerwagen on this vehicle. All right, Valentine, I can't really pen that thing in the front. I'm going to have to wait for it to give me its rear, really, to be able to deal with it. I'm kind of worried a little bit about this Sariano. It looks like the Sariano with gold is easily able to be able to smash through the front of my vehicle. Like, gosh, vehicles that can actually pen me, you know? How awful, right? All right, let's see if we can get this SU-14. There we go. SU-18, sorry. I got them a little bit. I would have liked to have been able to get rid of them from this game, though. I guess I want to come around the corner and just dump a mag into the Sariano. I do have 11 average damage, but even if I penetrate all 10 shots, then he's still, like, trading one for one with me. What I really want is for him to shoot someone else, and then maybe I can make fun of him. Maybe if I angle my armor, he'll make a misplay here. We'll talk about a misplay. There you go. Tried to fire HE at me. Luckily, I do have a repair kit, even though I don't have a med kit on this tank, because I'm using the, uh... 
the premium consumer ball to gain an advantage. And oh, I'm sorry about this, dude. Oh, hello. A13 damage. You can see why this tank is losing its owner so many credits. Talk about losing. It looks like our team is going to have a hard time with the way that the enemy team are coming into this one. Yeah, I just can't trade with that Sariano. So, wow, the Sariano actually a counter for this vehicle with those heat rounds. So, low tier world of tanks. Everyone has to spam gold. I spam gold. He spams gold. Everyone loses credits while we're seal clubbing effectively, I guess. So. Oh, I've got him tracked. I don't think he's going to get those tracks back. I might be able to load regular rounds as well here, actually. Oh, wow, look. I might actually pen some regular rounds, ladies and gentlemen, especially if I bypass. <gasps> That's kind of cheating. Oh, no, I'm lowering the lowering the um, the money requirements for this vehicle. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? I've seen some crazy games in the Panzer 2J over the years. I've seen Panzer 2J games where they've actually run out of ammunition and then it's kind of just like a cap race at the end. How ridiculous. Luckily, it looks like my artillery is doing a fairly good job at getting rid of the Sariano, but it looks like the Panzer S35 is actually crunching my team pretty badly right now. I don't think I'm even in radio communication with whoever just managed to get shut down there. I hope that this AMX 38 comes round. Um, if this AMX 38 comes and gets this Sariano, then I should be able to get the Panzer 4A at the back unless he's firing something funky, I guess. Obviously, with the, um, the dead loader, it's going to make this game a little bit more tricky. But uh, can I really take my time here? Oh no, I've goofed, I've goofed, I've goofed, I've goofed. This guy can just pen me with all of his shells. Oh no. Oh no. I thought I was meant to be paid to win, boys and girls. Oh, that's, that's a pretty good hit though, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, I've nearly got him down. Just one more should do it. And then hopefully I can go back and get the... Is that another Sariano? Oh, hopefully that Sariano doesn't fire gold. If I keep him there for a little bit... Oh, there we go. <gasps> so close. I paid, spent 8,000 credits to do that. 8,000 credits to do that. Maybe if I angle my armor in, I can keep the guy tracked and my artillery can shut him down. Looks like my artillery is shooting someone else, though. I just want this guy to bounce. Maybe I can try and bait him off my frontal armor again. Gotta hurry this up. Oh, yes! Okay, cool. I got the, uh, the gold noob out the game, even though I really am the gold noob myself, aren't I? Oh, more gold noobs! What's this? They're all fighting back with their their gold. I'm never going to be able to win this game, not with the amount of hit points. But I have done a thousand damage in a tier 3 tank and picked up four kills. Um, it's a shame that I'm going to lose in what is meant to be one of the most overpowered seal clubbers in the game. But it looks like at least the amount of gold that gets fired at me is way different these days as to what it used to be back in the day. Back in the day, man. Not everyone was firing gold. And there weren't tanks like the Sariano in the game that got really good heat pen. And so I would basically just brush those kinds of tanks aside. Well, they didn't exist, so I'd brush all of the other vehicles aside and not actually take any damage. Okay, cruisers managed to get my butt. Hopefully I can manage to ricochet off the side of my vehicle. I actually can here. What's this Panzer 35? Gotta watch out for him. I've probably got more chance of actually ricocheting this guy from the side than I do from the other guy. So I'm gonna just reverse at this guy and hope he just continues to fire regular rounds at me while I fire gold at him. Can I get shot here? Not quite. Oh, how many credits is this costing me? This is very expensive, poor guy. I don't know why the Panzer 4A just abandoned this guy. Alright, somebody's capping. I guess it's this Sariano that's capping, or maybe it's the Panzer 4A who went all the way around. Alright, so I've got the PZ-35. Uh, there's no... I have to start advancing back towards the base. Oh, he's got so many hit points. And he's got me. Well, I did elite damage. I did elite damage, boys and girls. Man, that is a filthy tank. Nearly got a top gun in this one. There you have it, the Panzer II J, the most expensive tank to play in World of Tanks. Because you're literally doubling your penetration when you do load gold rounds. So unfortunately, it doesn't look like this was a high caliber. Oh no, the Panzer, the other seal clubber, actually managed to get the high caliber in that game. Otherwise, I most likely could have got a first class or possibly an ace there. I actually finished second on experience in the entire game, even though I didn't get a Battle Hero medal. This thing is filthy. I spent 38,000 credits on ammunition. And while I do make profit, if you were to take away the 30k that I got from a battle mission, I would have lost credits. That's actually terrifying to think that the average 
cost that people are spending on ammunition for this vehicle is actually 68,000. So, um, okay. Looks like people are spamming a lot more gold than I do in my Panzer 2J. Maybe I was fairly efficient with my ammunition in that scenario. Okay, so that was the most expensive tank to play. What is the second most expensive tank to play? Well, it look no further. It is the Object 279E. So this is the third reward of the second set of personal missions. The Object 279E is an absolute blight on the world of tanks population. Um, yeah, I decided to make mine uh, suitably horrendous. Yeah, with an Uncle Scrubby Baby on the front. Uh... A, a decal which you could be able to get from last year's uh, event. Wow, that's actually interesting. The um, My mouse cursor disappeared when I used the free cam there to be able to show you. That's a bit of a shame. That's a nice modification to be able to uh, zoom in on the on the wonderful Uncle Scrubby Baby decal. Hopefully this isn't going to make my mouse cursor disappear inside the game, although it quite possibly could. So the 2790 early, this thing's just outrageously good because it doesn't have a lower plate. And so that means that its armor can just brush aside all tier eight, tier 8 and tier 9 tanks. And against tier 10s, as long as you kind of raise the front of the vehicle up in between your shots, uh, you will be bouncing even tier 10 gold rounds. The only things that you're going to probably struggle with are when you're having to deal with tier 10 tank destroyers. But when you're in a matchup like this, there's not really too much to fear. So I've got two builds on this tank. One will be using a turbo, one will be using a durability device. Uh, the durability device is very nice because, of course, you don't want your opponents to be able to lock you in place, especially when you're baiting them into shooting your belly so much. But I think I'm going to go for the turbo on this map. I've also got two sets of ammunition, one more expensive, one less expensive. In this kind of a situation, I probably don't need that many gold rounds, although we'll see if I regret it later on. So when the Object 279E first went into the game, it actually went in in a pretty nerfed state, although nobody really got to play it in that state. Apart from me, I got to play it at Gamescom. Actually, little did I know I was playing a vehicle that would just become so outrageously good inside the game so later on. Although, oh god, i got to share a mic with the QB commander as well. Um, but little did I know that Wargaming were going to buff this thing so much between when I played it at Gamescom and when the vehicle went into the game. And they basically buffed the, the lower plate armor on this vehicle. When I say the lower plate armor, it has no lower plate. They buffed the belly armor of this vehicle, which meant that then, of course, you can tilt the tank upwards and then because you have no lower plate, lower, no lower plate, and you've got such good underneath armor on this tank, it just became outrageous. So the 2790E is one of those kind of vehicles along with the Chieftain that I would absolutely love for them to nerf. Even as a 2790E owner, somebody who has now put bond equipment on their 2790E, because I guess I want to have every advantage on the most overpowered vehicle inside the game. Uh, even though I have one of the tanks, I would just love for them to nerf it, because it, they're just kind of game ruining. They're usually played by better players, for sure, because you do have to do quite a few things to be able to get your hands on the 2790. But it's just so irritating to see one just ruin a game. And all all that's really having fun is that player in the 2790 who just gets to do outrageous things, drive forwards, just be stupid, and, um, yeah, just punish, really. So, okay, everyone's spamming heat from the beginning of the game. I might as well join. I mean, this is meant to be one of the most expensive games. And well played to this T7 Heavy for the way that he's firing at me there. So I'm just going to keep pressuring him in between his shells. And he might actually end up penning me, penning me three times. They penned me two out of four times with his gold shells. He's lost pretty much most of his tank. I don't want the 60 TP to talk to me anymore, so I'm just going to mute him for this battle. It's not me putting him on the blacklist. I just don't want to talk to him anymore. Or have him telling me to fall back when I'm clunking out some heavy tanks. So the only real problem this vehicle has is that its gun depression, as you can see, is absolutely awful. The 5 degrees doesn't really get the job done. So you've got to watch out for that. Well, I'm actually going to intuition switch to an AP round, unlike most FV215B1... Uh, not unlike most uh, Object 279E drivers. So I should be able to just wedge my vehicle up. You'll see what the, the secret is to this vehicle, and that is to do stuff like this. And then people just get confused. They can try and shoot your weak point on top. They can try and get your belly, and then you just go down and you do a little bit of a clutch shot like that. And this is Object 279E, 101. Spam the gold, bounce the gold, tilt the vehicle upwards. Annoyingly get shot in the turret by a... An FU-215B183. Put one into the T-7 Heavy, finish him off. And do you see how they just get confused? And you can't really blame players like this. Not only are they spamming gold at me, um, they're not penning their gold. 
And you, you can't really blame them because there aren't really very many vehicles that can just sit in front of tanks like this so stupidly and just do these crazy things. But I gotta stop losing my hit points. Quite often I do that on uh, on YouTube or on Twitch when I'm answering questions or trying to explain things that I'm not actually focused on what I'm doing. And that is that I'm getting clapped by this FB215B183. But you know what? You see what's happening in the game? The game is pretty much done and dusted. So, well, I don't want to get caught by this FV215B183 anymore. I kind of want to also get some shots in. I think I might go above here and try and shoot down on these players. That guy seems to be turning. I need to shoot the C75 a little bit, though. I can shoot him in the top of his tank. Heat is such a tremendous advantage in these kinds of situations against German armor because, of course, they can't really do much about it. They got thinly armored turrets, and thin armor does not do well against heat, even if it's angled well, because it can pen up to. Oof! Pen up. <laughs> Bloomin' hell! Like I, I think I did a pretty good job with the QB commander with, uh, with what it's actually what I do. <laughs> Either that, or I'm that predictable over the years. I have to admit, when I have a QB commander in a pre-recorded replay, uh, when I say a pre-recorded replay, like a, you know what I mean, like a, a replay that I'm picking for YouTube. I definitely like to mute him, as if you haven't noticed, because otherwise, yeah, just sharing a mic with him can be a little bit confusing, a little bit distracting. All right, we've got an artillery over here. Exactly, I'm going to reload an HE shell after I fire an AP shell, and hopefully get a little bit of extra at the end of the game. Little bit of spotting there. What? I didn't get any spotting? Are you actually kidding me? Well, this is actually quite a pathetic game for the Object 2790. Uh, 4,700 combined is nothing special. Nothing special at all. I have to admit, this game was a lot faster than I thought it was going to be. I probably should have been more aggressive. All right, so those are the two most expensive tanks. What's the third? Well, it's actually the Fosh B. And this is interesting because it's actually by far the most expensive tech tree tank to play. And I think the reason why the Fosh B is so expensive is because it has very poor standard penetration for a tier 10 TD. All right, so we're number one on damage, number one on experience. Doesn't really mean much when you're just such an overpowered vehicle. Okay, let's go and get stuck into that Fosh B. So yeah, I, I, the, the main reason why this vehicle has such an expensive price tag is 257 standard pen and only 325 on the gold. So I do expect that a lot of people are just whiffing those shells to be able to well, they're whiffing the gold rounds to have any kind of a chance of being able to deal with their opponents. So the Fosh B is the most scary tank in the game, in theory, to be in front of for, albeit, 10 seconds. That's because it's got a six-round 120mm autoloader, and it has a two-second intraclip reload, meaning that it can dump out all six of its rounds within 10 seconds of the first shot. And at 400 L for a pop, that means 2,400 damage in 10 seconds. So, for example, let's say I had two SU-130PMs. I could be able to get rid of both of them in a single magazine. And even when you reload, look, 34 seconds reload is not too shabby. So I've got two builds on this tank. One is with coated optics and one is with durability. I really like the durability build on this tank. I think the durability build is fantastic because then you can just really get up in the faces of your opponents. And that's what I like to do when I'm playing in the Fosh B. So this tank doesn't really have much gun depression to mention. So we've got to watch out for that. But what I am going to do is just be really aggressive. Now, you've got to be careful with the Fosh because it has big weak points here, here. Its side armor and rear armor is tragic. Um, and it, it's quite easy to lock down with the way that the front tracks just to stick up. I'd say it's probably one of the easier vehicles to double track in the game. I guess one of the only advantages the tank has is that from the side, the front wheel is kind of like not even on the hull armor. So your opponents have the choice of either damaging the tank or tracking the tank. Unless, of course, they're shooting it from this angle and then they'll be able to go in. But yeah, basically with this vehicle, I like to be aggressive. And um, I could stop and try and shoot at the SU-130 PM. Maybe I hit a shot. Maybe I don't hit a shot. But remember, with this vehicle, I think sometimes it's more about being like the big game hunter. And that is not stopping for one shot or two shots but trying to actually get into an ambush position where you're hopefully going to get a lot more. So I'm really hoping that I'm not going to get spotted from across here through these bushes. If I don't, then I'm going to just sit in wait. Now, I want one of my opponents to push down this alleyway, and if they do, I'm going to go right after it. So interestingly enough, this is a really nice matchup where there's only three tier 10 tanks. 
and the heavy tankers actually made their way through the valley. So I'm just praying, praying, praying that something like a 50 TP, maybe an SU, anything is going to just come this way. I'm really surprised that the artillery are, are over here. They should fall back uh, because we I don't believe a 705A is going to be able to hold back all of those tanks with more gun depression. One of the reasons why I didn't go to the valley. Well, the Boras destroyed, ouch, it hurt, in the Senlag. I like that name, that's a good one. Um, I don't think I have a chance to really hold back here anymore. Okay, there's the T-103. There's the Fosh B. Okay, I think I can ambush that Fosh B. I think I'll be focusing on the MBT. Minus one, I can hear him. Minus two, I can hear him still. Minus three. Okay, we're going to go up to this Fosh. I'm just going to track him once. I missed his tracks. That was a really bad play. Don't choke that shot. I, I can kill him still. Oh, Fosh, get Foshed. Oh, boys, that was filthy. But unfortunately, I'm reloading. And I lost all of my bloody hit points. But hopefully this Borask will help me. Are you going to help me, Borask? Are you just going to let me die? What is it? Everybody's firing gold right now. I might die. Oh, my goodness gracious. High rolls on high rolls. T103 high roll. To be fair, the 50 TP didn't high roll his first shot. High roll on the T103 for the... Uh, Oh, well, actually, he low-rolled his first, and ah, it's just a 50-50. Oh, that's so sad. All I did was go in and ruin a Fosh's day and then got caught. That was a little bit of a misplay there by me. I should have missed one of the shots on the Fosh as well. It cost me a little bit too much. Oh, well, at least I didn't spam any gold. Ah, that's not what we want to happen. All right, well, I tell you what. Now, I could basically play like a 260, and that's going to be for the same reason, the like the Object 279E. That's expensive because it's uh, an overpowered vehicle. Well, not really that much these days, that everyone's just spamming gold in because they want to want to be the best. Why don't we try and pick uh, another tank that isn't Tier 10? That sounds like a good idea. Let's just filter out the Tier 10, and then we can see what other expensive tanks are. So that's profit. No, we're going to have to do it the other way. So the Cobra. Okay, that makes sense. Minus 14,000 credits per game. I can understand why the Cobra is an expensive vehicle to play. Because the Cobra has premium rounds that do what the regular rounds can't. And that is increase the alpha damage significantly. The Cobra is actually quite a weird tank. Because it has three different rounds with three different amounts of alpha damage for its shells. Unfortunately, it doesn't really carry enough ammunition, so I don't ever take any of the really cheap HE. But the amount of alpha damage on its heat rounds is 360, on its premium hash rounds is 490, and I believe on its cheap HE rounds, I think it's 510 or 515, I think. So if you can manage to pen those cheap HE, you're actually doing more damage than you could do with the premium HE. But the problem is, is that your penetration goes from 210 on the premium, way 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 down so i've actually got two builds on the um the cobra i've got one build which is a close quarters combat build as you can see here and i got another build which is a coated optics build um but this tank really isn't a sniper nevertheless uh it's really tough to decide i don't really want to go fight the heavies but you know what if i go south it's just going to end up with me being passive a lot of the time do i want to go for heat for long range or he well the whole point of this game the whole point of this is spending credits in the video today right so i might as well break a few more although i haven't really been that good at spamming all that much gold actually what am i talking about i did it in the panzer 2j it was only the fosh that i didn't oh man that fosh game that was brutal i but that's what happens with the fosh you kind of get caught so you better hope that you're able to eliminate the enemy in that single mag right um uh, misplaced by me probably a little bit too aggressive all righty then so Live by the sword, die by the sword. That's the motto there. So, the Cobra. At least we still win the battle, as we can see. Alright, so let's get forwards in the Cobra. We're going to get up on this ridgeline. Wow, look at all these people who have managed to advance through the battle parts faster than me. I've, this is actually like the second time I've played in this new patch. I know, right? I'm absolute slacker. Gosh, this Cobra's got really weird traction. It's actually got incredibly good traverse speed, but that's about it. So it looks like the T100LT might have just caught a glimpse at us. I wonder if that Char Future 4 will spot me as I slinky up here. He actually doesn't. That's good. All right. Uh, is that T100LT pushed up? No, he hasn't. Okay, I'm going to keep going forwards. Uh, it's a little bit risky, but I feel like you have to get some people forwards on this map. 
So I'm going to knock down this tree this way, maybe to just give me a little bit of extra bush. I'm going to knock the bush down this way. And then... So this is where this tank is actually not very good, aka at long range, because it's meant to be a tank that fires very quickly. Wow, look at that. I actually got spotted there by the Lorraine 50T. So I got outspotted. And worst, w the worst thing now is that I have to basically... I, it's a lot harder once you've been spotted in a location to start using bushes in said location. Okay. Wow, that was a good one. I can't actually pen that guy in the hole. Maybe I can. Should we just go? That wasn't good. Oh my lord. I just spent 15,000 credits to do 156 damage. Oh my goodness gracious. Oi, oi, oi. And that's because these hash rounds, they have 210 millimeters of pen. So if you can penetrate, boy, are they devastating. If you can't, boy, do they suck. So this T100LT has done a really good job in pushing forwards. Um, I, I have no idea what my team is doing and why they're not annihilating that char. Uh, I need the Fosh over here to help me as well. Um, hopefully the Fosh comes over here because it looks like there's just no team up towards the northern part. Uh, unfortunately, there's not much I can do. I can't go around the corner to get this T100LT. So what I think I have to do is just make sure I keep spotting uh, the char in case he comes around the corner. But I've also got to watch out with exposing my lower plate around the corner for the enemy team. Uh, sounds like somebody's shooting the T100LT now. Uh, he's starting to lose it. I might go and get one cheeky shot in. Or oh, can we get one cheeky shot? Oh, yes we can. What about two cheeky shots? No. Bad, bad aim by me, honestly. There we go. Ah, oh, I didn't get the delete shell in. Okay, so there we go. I did a thousand damage with that magazine, and now I'm getting a good amount of spotting against this Char Future 4. But already in this game, I fired, like, what, eight rounds? Uh, I've spent 30,000 credits on ammunition, probably. Maybe even a little bit more. Maybe more like 35. <laughs> it's a very expensive tank to play. Now, you can fire heat on this vehicle, but what's the point of playing a tank with only 360 alpha, right? The whole point of this vehicle is that you want to be um, pumping out the big boy damaging rounds, right? Come on, Leopard, finish off the char, lad. Come on, Leopard, finish off the char. What are you doing? Just go kill him. Bro, are you serious? I think he's... Okay, he got him. He got him, boys and girls. Kind of thinking that maybe I should push forwards, but also not. Oh, wow. I really want to get this Lorraine, though. Here we go. No! No! <laughs> This is not working. I like to play this thing at close quarters. That's my preferred way to play this vehicle. I like to play it like an ambush tank. Um, so you're a little bit disappointed with how it's going here. Oh, this WTL Panzer IV is the perfect candidate there. Yes. Yes. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, man. I probably should be firing a little bit of heat here. I think the heat could save me. But we're already up to 4,100 combined. So you know what? I'm not complaining. That FE405, that is the dream to shoot with a vehicle like this. The dream to shoot with a vehicle like this. I'm not sure if I'm going to get to reload for the next 20 seconds. I might do. There's a Centurion 7-1 that I can probably be able to get a little bit of at the end of the battle. And this Lorraine, its hull armor is awful. Can you imagine somebody who spent all of their tokens on the Lorraine unless they already have like a Cobra and pretty much everything else? Don't buy the Lorraine 50T. YouTube, I've warned you here first. Oh, he's losing all of his HP. He's meant to be mine. He's meant to be mine, boys and girls. What's this guy doing? Is that the back of his turret? It's the front of his turret. I think he's all pre-aimed for me. All right, there we go. That's what I want. That's what I want. Should I kill this Manticore as well? I want to go for the Kunzapans. He's got more HP for me. Yes. Oh, come on. Let's get a Dream Mag. Is this Centurion just AFK? Oh, come on. Do something, dude. No! Okay, last shot of the game. Make it a good one, baby. No! It's terrible! Oi, oi, oi. Oh, well. 5,000 combined is pretty good. I'll take it. And that's why this is one of the most expensive tanks in the game. Boy, am I not looking forward to seeing my ammunition cost. I think I fired, like... What did I fire? 15 rounds of ammunition or 16 rounds of ammunition? Oh, no! I don't want to see it! Um, but for a lot of people, they don't really care, right? Now, usually when I play the Cobra in a game that was a little closer or we had a little bit more time to breathe, I would have fired some more heat rounds and I would have made profit with the heat rounds. But we still do uh, 5,000, like 300 combined there, but oof, 66,000 credits spent on ammunition. Well, I was just getting those averages down a little bit for you. 
All right, so I think I've got enough time for one more game today. And for some reason, the actual A43 is one of the most expensive tanks. And I can't imagine why. I guess it's because the, the A43 has... Let's go and investigate as to why the A43 has such horrible... Um, such hor horrible profitability. Wow, I haven't played this thing in so long. I actually still use a Sixth Sense directive. Okay, I see why this thing is so expensive. Oh my lord, look at its gun. It uses the 57 millimeter. I guess you could use the 76, but even then you've got terrible pen. Okay, 112 pen at tier 6 really shows you how the amount of penetration that a tank has affects its profitability. We've seen so many games today that I will that I've played that either the pen goes on the Panzer 2J from 23 up to 46. That's why it's expensive. On the 279E, it's because people are playing their big boy tank. They want to spam all of the gold in their big boy tank. In the Fosh B, it's because it has poor penetration and because you're not very flexible with the amount of rounds that you want to fire. In the Fosh B, you can't go, oh, well, I'll fire two premium rounds to kill this mouse, and then I'm going to fire the four rounds at the Pershing afterwards, and I want to fire regular rounds then. That's not a possibility. It's either full gold or no gold, and usually people are going to be electing for the full gold rather than no gold. Okay, well, talk about expensive, you know. Now I'm going to be playing against tier 8 tanks in an A43 with uh, 112 millimeters of pen. Oh, that's not going to be working. So I guess I'm going to be spamming a lot of gold because I got 189 millimeters of gold pen on this tank. That's why people are spamming it, right? This, I believe, is the same gun that you'll get on like the T28 or the T34. The 57 millimeter is fantastic. Although we're no longer in tier four or tier five, so it's not quite so good. Now we're playing against tier eights. Imagine that this is the same gun on the T28 that can't meet anything above tier six but now I'm going to have to make it work against tier 8. What a freak of a vehicle from that regard. But, oh, look at our rate of fire, 1.85. Pretty good. Nice gun handling as well on this tank. This could be fun. All right, Progetto 46. He could kill me so easily. He didn't actually fire any shots on the way in. That really surprises me. I'm not hitting anything right now. Now I am. Oof. Oof, sir. Man my team would come forwards, that'd be so amazing. Lost my gunner. I think this 46 is going to rush me. I think he's going to rush me. I don't think I've got a choice. That's minus one, minus two, minus three. Okay, I guess we go in then. He might shoot me one more time, but oh well. Auto aim is for losers, quacky baby. All right, that's not a bad result. Got to watch out for this 40 TP. Is he going to shoot me? He is. I've actually done pretty good without gold spam, he says, as he starts to load the gold. Well, that is a good result. You know, we got rid of a tier 8. We've crippled a tier 6. Just got a KB-2 here. The Comet decides that he wants to drive in front, and then he doesn't realize that the KB-2 is reloading for 10 seconds. Got to be a little bit careful here, but also not too careful, you know? Oh, no! You're a braver man than me, Mr. Comet, especially for playing that tank without a paint job, dude. Get away from me! You're playing against one of the creme de la creme Comet players. What are you going to do? Try and side scrape here? Fine. I don't know why you needed to take the inside so much, my dude, but okay, I'll take it. I'll see, I'll see. Alright, so they've got a load of TDs. At this kind of a stage of the game, you've either got to decide about whether you want to do nothing or whether you want to do something. And I decided I want to do something. Oh, Lord above. Oh, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm so dead. Oh, I'm dead. Okay. Well, at least I make the sacrifice and now my team don't go into that horrible ambush against the SU-100 and the CS-52 lease shuts them down. Alrighty then. Well, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that is not a bad result for a tier 6 tank in a horrible uh, matchup. Um... Probably ended up losing about 100,000 credits just playing today. These are very expensive tanks to play. And so I would thoroughly recommend avoiding all of the vehicles that we just talked about um, if you want to try and see your, your credits increase. Other honorable mentions have to go to the FE4005 because that thing's got really good premium rounds that have 
that 8,000 credit price tag. And tanks like the 50B, I guess because people just want to dump a load of gold on that thing at long range because they don't have a chance to fight in close quarters. The Badger and the Minotauro, both again because they have poor amounts of standard pen and they need to load gold to be able to compensate for it. And while we're here, I'd like to show you, it's not just ammunition cost that Tomato GG is taking into account, it is also taking into account repair cost. And the vehicles that have the most repair, the highest repair bills in World of Tanks are the Mouse, the E100, and the 60TP. All of those super heavy tanks whose duty it is to be able to get in there and weather the storm for all of you. But interestingly enough, they actually are ending up being quite profitable. With the Mouse actually being the second cheapest tier 10 heavy tank to play, even though it has one of the highest average repair costs, I guess because it's in the thick of it and dealing a lot of damage while it's alive. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was it for me today. Really hope you enjoyed the return of the playing series and a look at the most expensive tanks in the game. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, give it a thumbs down. And let me know in the comments down below if you're surprised at any tanks that were on this list or any that didn't quite make it onto it. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.